love to be. Right now we're going to talk about cross-examination. There are four constructive speeches in a policy debate round, and there is a cross-ex after each constructive speech. So that means that there are four cross-exes in the round. A cross-examination is used to ask your opponent questions. There are two reasons to use your cross-examination well and two ways you can use your cross-examination well. The first reason is to get your opponent to give strategical concessions. So by that, I mean you want to ask some questions that can support arguments for why they're bad for you. You want to get them to say things that are bad for them. So a concession can be anything. If they say yes to a question, they're conceding that Yes, it is this. If they say no, they're conceding that no is that. So you want them to say things to support your argument. So you have to have arguments in your head when you're going up to cross X. And you want to use those arguments that you have in your head to ask them questions that lead up to supporting that argument that you have in your head. That doesn't mean asking your argument in a question form. That means asking questions that might not be seen related to the argument but actually are. And that doesn't mean revealing all your cards, or revealing all your arguments and cross X, or saying your argument and then asking a question. That means asking questions and then up in your next speech bringing it back up and actually saying why those questions were important. The second reason why cross-examination is important is for clarification. If your opponent said something and you don't really understand what they said, you can ask them, hey, what did you say at this point? Oh, what does this mean? So that's really important for clarification. So if you missed something, don't ever be afraid to ask a clarifying question because at the end of the day, it's going to help you if you don't understand something. Now I'm going to go over the part of what you should do or tips for asking questions. If you're asking questions, remember that you are in control. If you're the cross-examiner, that is probably one of the only times in the match where you'll be, be in control and where you're, you're like calling the shots for the match. So that means you don't let them ask you questions. You don't let them control your cross -ex. So You determine what happens. So be sure that you remember that and that you are in control. Now this isn't like an excuse to maybe be rude or be overstepping your power, but it is a reason for why you should be firm and make sure that you control your cross -ex in a way that benefits you. So the second point is that time is precious. In your cross -ex, the goal is to ask as many questions and get as many answers that are good for you to have as possible. So that means that you should really always be aware of your time. That doesn't mean that we're spending all the cross -ex on one question or even two questions. We want to spend cross -ex on a multitude of questions. So that means that you always need to pay attention to how much time you have and make sure that you're not using too much time on something that you don't need to be spending too much time on because that's going to hurt you at the end of the day. So that leads into my third point, don't ask open-ended questions. Make sure that your questions are closed-ended. The only time when it's really appropriate to ask an open-ended question is when you're trying to get clarification. And if you need clarification, try not to have the whole cross X be clarification. Maybe ask one clarification question, or two at most, um, but I really think one is okay. But other than that, you should be asking closed-ended questions. Closed-ended questions are questions where they can only really give one or two types of answers to. An open-ended question is one where they can get up and explain it. Like, for example, if I ask them, can you explain this part of your F? That is an open-ended question, and that allows them to get up and basically advocate themselves for probably like 30 seconds to a minute. And you don't want to turn the cross-ex into a speech time for them. If you ask open-ended questions and let them start explaining things part of their F that they don't need to be or that they explained it in the speech before, you are basically giving them a whole other speech. Don't let your cross-ex become a speech for the opponent. So the next point is that cross X is binding. What they say in cross X sticks to them and it follows them. It follows them like wherever they go in the debate. But you always want to use that. This is only important if number five, you follow through. In a debate round, if you get them to make a ton of strategical concessions in the cross X, but in the next speech you forget about it or you don't say anything about it, then this doesn't matter. Uh, that didn't matter. Your cross X was essentially wasted. If they say something that's binding in cross -ex, make sure that you make it binding and by following through and saying it in your next speech because it's only really binding if you follow through. If you don't mention it later, the judge is going to forget about it, you're going to forget about it, they're going to forget about it, it's not going to matter, and you're probably going to use a point in the match that really could have helped you to win. cross -ex can actually can really help you to win and really help you to make strategical arguments, but if you don't use it well, then that's probably a chance wasted to win. Next to being asked questions. So the first point is to be confident. Being confident is really important because if you're not confident, then the opponent can 
can exploit that. If they see that you're anxious or nervous or that you're not really willing to answer the questions, they will exploit it and they're going to use that against you and they're going to be harsher towards you. If you're confident, that shows to the judge, oh, they know what they're talking about. Even if you really don't know what you're talking about, if you give an air of confidence off, that maybe makes it seem to the opponent like you know what you're talking about, to the judge that you know what you're talking about, even if you really don't. And so the next point is to stall and use up time. If they ask you a question and you don't know how to answer it, then the best thing to do is to kind of stall and use up time. And even if it's a question that you do know the answer to, always try to kind of use up their time because time is precious to them when they're asking questions. And you want to make it into a speech for yourself because then they don't have time to ask good questions and you can't really make any concessions if you're using up all your time on one question to explain yourself. So make sure you use that against them. Three, don't be rude. This is something that actually goes with both sides. If you are rude asking questions and if you're rude when you're being asked questions, you're going to lose speaker points. Speaker points are really important because at the end of the match, when the judge writes down your speaker points and they realize, hey, this person's been really rude the whole round, even if you win, you're going to get really bad speaks. So don't be rude because that brings down your speaker points. It's just all around inappropriate to be rude towards your opponent. Three so rounds are supposed to be respectful in a way to debate in a closed environment where everybody is respectful and understands and listens to each other. And you kind of destroy that by being rude. So when you're asking questions, don't be rude. When you're being asked questions, don't be rude. That's different from being confident. Being confident and being firm is different from being rude. Being firm and confident shows that you know what you're talking about, but being rude just shows that, I mean, you're just a disrespectful person. So there's a fine line from being confident and firm and being rude. And then fourth and final point of being asked questions is that cross X is binding, just like with asking questions. Whatever you say can and will be held against you. So make sure you're really careful about the things you say. And if you do say something bad, make sure that you take it back in cross X. Because if you say something bad in cross X and then you try to take it back in a later speech, that might not work. And the judge might not buy it. The opponents definitely won't buy it. So if you say something bad in cross X, take it back in cross X. Don't let it just stand there. All these points can really help you give a really good cross-ex on both sides, whether you're asking the questions or being asked the questions. So really understand that cross-ex is really important and always use it well.